Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. So I'm wondering, okay, the Taoists say a woman walks away undiminished, but they don't say a guy does. So let's focus on women. What gives a woman the most energy after sex? Like, what do you do to make that happen? I'd say breathing is a huge piece of that. So, you know, we we recirculate energy through the breath. Breath is a carrier of prana, of chi, of energy. And so that most people tend to breathe really shallow, hold the breath, tighten up when they're sexually intimate. <laughs> Right. And so they're curtailing the flow of that energy and then they usually just eject it out of themselves. And so that deep, steady four count inhale, four count exhale really helps to move and recirculate the sexual energy in the body. And then it naturally goes to where it needs to go for healing and rejuvenation in our system. For women, I would say the breathing then is an important piece of that. And then I would also say seeking out vaginal orgasms versus clitoral orgasms. So the equivalent to a typical penile orgasm of build up, get to a peak, have these contractions and then decline and decline in energy is a typical clitoral orgasm as well. There's a build, there's a peak, there's contractions, and then there's a decline of energy, right? Where often women will use that type of orgasm in the same manner as stress relief or to help them go to sleep, right? Which to me is the lowest form of using that orgasm. Again, not from a moral judgment place, but what's giving us energy and what's removing energy. So for women, Seeking out these deeper vaginal orgasms opens them up to much more cataclysmic, deep, powerful, transformative, cosmic places within themselves. And so these orgasms, I say, are the life-changing orgasms for women. This is what really helps them to self-realize tap into their true potential. These orgasms, like at the cervix in Taoist sexual reflexology, they mapped out reflex flexology points in the vagina and the vulva and in the penis and the cervix is considered to be the heart point for women. And there's an association with the vagus nerve going all the way up to the crown chakra. And so in achieving these orgasms, they are actually opening up in this very deep cosmic spiritual rebirth level, right? La petite mort, the little death, the little death and rebirth. And this again, really reflected my own experiences of what these orgasms were about. So my very first orgasm personally was a cervical orgasm. Orgasm. And then later on, a few years later, I had a you know clitoral orgasm. Again, these were all through my own exploration, not because I knew what I was looking for. It was just searching and exploring and finding them. And then in having clitoral orgasms, I was kind of like, well, that's fun, but like, whatever, that's nothing like what the <laughs> vagina is all about, right? Like, let them eat clit is what I say, right? But the good stuff is all in the <laughs> vagina. The clitoris is literally the tip of the iceberg at 90% of the power of female sexuality is in the vagina. So I would say that the direction for women that I recommend is heading into the vagina and doing that exploration there because there's so much rich territory to be explored. And then I, I often say that women can save thousands of dollars and hours in therapy by having vaginal orgasms. Like once they have them, they don't go back. And then another thing to know is that every woman can. This is the Anami guarantee. And everything that we've talked about about men being able to, you know, have sex for eight hours without having an orgasm or learn how to separate orgasm from ejaculation or women having G-spot orgasms, cervical orgasms, ejaculating across the room. I guarantee that every single person can do these things. They just need to know that they can and then learn the steps to getting there and remove any kind of blockages that are impeding the natural flow of that innate energy that we all have. 